Whatever concerns me or belittles me or attacks my character does not matter on this campus. Facts that Wesley pushed out their only black president. It feels, it feels uncomfortable. And being black on this campus makes me feel little and I don't want to feel little. The disproportion and the lack of representation is very clear, it's very evident. And the Blue Lives Matter protest. There's so many things I'm supposed to lie to these students and look them dead in the face and say Western Illinois University is a safe university for black students. No, you can't sit there and lie. And that's what they wanted us to do as orientation leaders. I'm disgusted that Western Illinois University will be on my bachelor's degree. Am I important on this campus? You tell me. The Black Student Association, we held a protest. The protest was a result of the Black at WIU hashtag on Twitter. Western is the type of university that does not like to be put on blast about racial issues because there's so many. Um, the reason for this protest was the hashtag Black at WIU got started and everybody started coming forward about their experiences at Western while being Black. And it's like, okay, well, it's not just me. So then all these tweets start circulating and Western didn't like that. So Western was just trying to reach out to BSA, like what can we do to help you all finally after we've been reaching out for help for years. Some of the tweets ranged from things such as the Macomb community back to the Macomb, back to WIU campus. I have never in my entire life been so uncomfortable where I became so vocal and I wanted to speak out against a lot of things that occur. Um, my freshman year, I had an African-American professor, my first black professor ever, and I fell in love with African-American studies. I was unable to major in it, which is what I wanted to do because they didn't offer it. After that year, he was gone and the rest, the whole department just diminished, right? Then moving on to I joined BSA and I watched our budget get cut literally every year while white organizations continue to either have the same budget or they have all of these different resources that we didn't have. BSA is the biggest and first black organization on this campus and you wouldn't even know that because of the lack of acknowledgement that we get, the lack of funding, lack of resources, and the lack of guidance because we don't have any black faculty here to lead us, guide us, or anything like that. They were all pushed out and fired first when budget cuts occurred. I've definitely experienced a lot of challenges, um, primarily with the way the institution has handled um, just the campus climate. Uh, last year, politically, we were really polarized, not only between like Democrats and Republicans, but Trump supporters and those who didn't support Trump and social justice and like Black Lives Matter. And a Trump organization registered a table to do voter registration, but they were also like really advocating for people to vote for Trump. And they were publicly, you know, on campus and this is a public institution, so they had that right. But another grad student who works in the scheduling office had no idea that they actually scheduled the table. And I had gotten a text from other students on campus um, saying that this were, there was a group that were uh, terrorizing just students, you know, talking about Trump and like saying how Black Lives Matter is just not right and just making students feel unsafe. And so I went out there with a couple of other graduate students from different offices on campus and we were met, you know, with lots of slurs. Um, somebody told me that Breonna Taylor deserved to die and officers, well not, off the campus safety were standing right there not doing anything. Also, there were, um, higher ed administrators that were standing off to the side not doing anything either just like watching this um exchange happen and after the situation occurred the, they eventually left their table um the president at the university sent out an email saying graduate students should not be um uh, protesting during the time that they should be in their office and i didn't really consider like what i was doing protesting but i think just the nature of that email saying that i'm just here to work and not necessarily stand my ground and not fight for something I believe in and something that still haunts me today that it feels as if like I can't be authentically myself while also working for this institution. It was two Caucasian individuals and um, they basically just had on like um, 
redneck lives matter shirts and i know i was just looking um and they didn't i was looking i didn't say anything and he just was like you know what are you looking at like he just started saying stuff to me and obviously he felt some type of way but i hadn't even said anything to him i was just looking at the shirt because it kind of just it caught me off guard but even with that i just feel like the whole everyone's life matter yes that is true but i just feel like stuff actually happens to black people that shouldn't have to happen and that's why we we went along with that um that um idea to get the shirts made and stuff then it's like the truck he came behind my car and like he kind of tried the um skirt off fast and he had the confederate flag so that was really weird to me as well it's just like okay now you came from your parking spot to come over here now it's it's you're being childish and immature so that definitely was uncomfortable for me as well and that just happened last semester not only do i have to go off campus and feel like i'm not a part of this population but at school too and for western to be positioned in such a highly you know conservative really republican uh town such as macomb it's really really like dangerous sometimes and like scary to say that i do support black lives matter to say that i am queer to say that i am proudly and authentically myself because i understand that a lot of people who work here are not supportive of that and they don't really care about the identities that i hold walking across the street getting off the bus and getting called an ignorant black nigger by a white man just driving past um, as a second semester freshman 18 years old coming from the south suburbs of chicago being called a nigger by a white man for literally nothing is just just shows what goes down in macomb um, I was literally crossing the street. The man was driving past, and he had the audacity to even say that. So, um, just by him saying that is just already a, a red flag that people of our skin color is not welcome here. For him even feeling comfortable even calling me that. We had Dr. Jack Thomas being forced out of his position. I was actually living in Macomb during then, like during that summer. So I was seeing all these businesses in Macomb support it and they were only supporting it because they were getting a black man in power out of office and that's all they cared about. They didn't want a black man running the school. They didn't want the black man there still because it was attracting black students and they just knew that he was the reason why Western was failing because he was recruiting all these black students into the school. Like I, I literally heard one of my coworkers say, openly like he said it in front of all of us in front of the manager he was like my only problem with jack thomas is that he recruits these inner city kids and they're the same ones who's coming and getting high and getting drunk and going out partying and failing all their classes and they're bringing the crime and the violence like he openly said that i'm the only black person in the room the only black girl just sitting there with all these white men and he just openly and comfortably said that and no one held him accountable. No one corrected him. They all honestly agree with him. And it's just like, why, why do y'all think that's okay? Like the students think it's okay. And the students are comfortable, uh, comfortable enough to be ignorant. And it's because the administration allows that. That's the type of environment that Western created. I have to say personally, my RH training, it wasn't really a lot of diversity training or training dealing with confrontation rather a lot of people um didn't know how to deal with confronting certain people and by certain people i mean certain race and by that i mean black black students so a lot of the white ras or non-black ras would freak out and like go to the extreme and by go to the extreme OPS was always involved in any incident rather it be major or minor and so the lack of training basically caused all of that and so when they sit in our faces and they tell us okay we're going to train you we're going to we're going to implement what you complain about because we're constantly hearing it and then they sit us in the um the Sandberg Theater with a bunch of white ACDs and complex directors trying to tell me, a black woman, the importance of protective hairstyles. That isn't diversity on confrontation. I don't know what it is, but you can't tell me how to wear my hair, I already know. So I didn't need it. It was irrelevant. It was so, um, 
it was just like a slap to the face because we asked for something as a black community and they gave us something, excuse my language, have asked. Some RAs can attest to this. We had a training uh, before that was, it was like diversity training, which is, it sounds great, right? But it was taught by a small town Caucasian woman that referred to Africa as a country. I couldn't really take the training seriously after that. I'm not going to even lie to you. It was it was a joke. She she was considered a joke at that point. I can't talk about the president being fired. I shouldn't mention it to any of the new incoming students, which is why. Why can't we have those conversations? And then while we're in the training, we're being told that, yeah, you can talk about like the race issue, but like tell them that like what WIU is safe. How am I supposed to tell a student that WIU is safe? when I've seen so many racial issues that happen here, and how am I going to tell students that WIU is safe when we had an incident of uh, whites only at the printer, the Magma group was allowed to come in and do whatever they wanted, we had a Blue Lives Matter protest. There are so many things I'm supposed to lie to these students and look them dead in the face and say Western Illinois University is a safe university for black students. No, you can't sit there and lie. And that's what they wanted us to do as orientation leaders. And I couldn't believe that like all the white orientation leaders were just kind of the ones that were uncomfortable, they just chose not to speak on it and like, you know, can't force you to speak right. on something. And then the ones who were just like, it's really not that big of a deal, he's being fired. No, you don't see the bigger issue with it because you want to choose not to pay attention to the issues at all. You And then another thing is with the orientation leader, same thing again, I had somebody on staff, they say like, it's always the black students, that's the issue. You're an orientation leader, we welcoming students to the campus. You're the first experience they're gonna have here on campus. I had to sit here and smile and this my, my coworker's face, knowing that she said in the background that all the black students are the main issues here on campus. That's the that's the type of the stuff they allow to be on staff and you can see it through with the RAs. I've, there's plenty of RAs have been caught for saying racist stuff, but they're still on staff for everything. And I think that is just really the black experience here. You have to Fight for yourself. Like, you cannot be quiet. You cannot be too even conform for them because they make you feel so uncomfortable that you have nothing but to just speak out against a lot of the situations and things that happen. Our diversity and inclusion training is not diversity and inclusion training. Nobody speaks about the fact that we are here because there is racial tension. We are here because people do not believe that... Minority groups are going through this struggle like we are here because we are hiring people without compassion We are here with because people are privileged and refuse to see their privilege and instead of becoming allies and seeing how they can better support groups They continue to make it harder for groups by trying to silence them or downplay their issues So our training isn't even training and when I speak out about that then I'm then it's put on Shakira then to make the training it's put on me then to oh have this conversation with this person it's then put on me to do this like no like i'm gonna tell i'm gonna lie to a student and say that everything's safe here and then lie to them and say that we have resources here to make you feel safe what resources here are for black students to make them feel safe to make them feel comfortable to give them a space to speak there isn't any space i think being black when the downs happened there was nowhere to turn and i think that was the hardest part i try to work with the black students because they have no voice, when I say no voice, there is no director of a center or a space that they can go to and have somebody that looks like them, they can talk to, that understands them and their culture, right? And I was very outspoken about that because when that took place, they had just gotten rid of African American studies, then they took away the director of the GBCC. I felt as if um, in its attempt to self-correct, it went way off course. And the problem with that was they made black faculty staff and black students the victims of that. The highest number of people that lost their jobs were black, mostly women, right? And when you look at, you look at the number of black administrators at this institution, go look at Sherman Hall, go look at the number of white uh, faculty and staff who were at some lower level and were put up in a job at the highest level. We have so many black, the, the, the black people that we do have here have all the education, have all the, all the tools to be brought up to Sherman Hall, but they're not even a part of that conversation, which is why you don't see any. And I've heard a million reasons and excuses, but 
I have to thank the current president because I have a relationship with him and he's honestly sat down with us um, and he's very supportive and he's learning but he's willing to admit that he needs to learn and that to me that that's a big step however however it's always going to be hard for them to recruit black people and keep them here because if you look at them statistically you're looking at black faculty and staff who are qualified but you look at the white people and I hate this white black dynamic, but it's the reality that we live with as black people, right? You look at Sherman Hall and you look at the people who became interims and then put in the jobs. So imagine here you are, I've seen people with master's degrees go all the way up to the top to a job that a black person with a PhD could have done, right? Wow. Black students do not get the help that they need. Now I will say black students don't speak up, but why do we need to constantly speak up constantly for every little thing to find some help like I'll obviously go to my mom first before I go to the writing center um, it's almost as if when we do ask for help and we finally get it it's half-assed for example I was speaking to my advisor about a class which is a computer science class coding and if you're familiar with Python um, it is a difficult <laughs> system and so I asked my, well, let me get start this. I constantly ask questions to my professor. I am the person that will ask questions until you are deaf. Like, if I don't know, I'm gonna ask you. Um, and so I asked the professor, I've asked to set up one-on-ones with the professor, and we did set up one-on-ones. Um, and I've also looked into tutoring, uh, but that wasn't helpful because that student would just give me the answers. That's not helping me no way know how like what am I looking at if you knew the Python system you'd walk you turn right around um, and so I emailed my advisor about the situation you know I talked to my professor we set up one-on-ones and I went to tutoring and they would only give me the answer so it's obviously not helping me what do I do her response was ask the other students in your class well I already did that and we're all stuck all of us and I don't know if it's if it's me, I felt as though I did my part. I reached out to whatever, whoever, as best as I could. And I, I had to retake the class. Um, I passed it the next time, but the help was not there. Everything was half-assed. I reached out, the resources weren't enough for me. It was, and maybe it's happening for other students, but the response I got, response I got back from my advisor asked the other students, like, what? Black at WIU, being told that my chapter has a beastie boy complex and only worry about parties, but don't hold any events or do anything for the campus. Also was told that we don't run for any leadership positions on campus, and they also had like a list of 10 uh, concerns and issues they had with our chapter. Um, so as part of the beastie boy complex, chapters of Alpha and fraternities and sororities have parties everywhere. Um, we was trying to have a welcome back party. I want to say it was 2019. We was trying to have a, it was in 2018, 2019. We was trying to have a welcome back party, and um, a flyer got sent to the Office of Student Activities, which is now OSC, and the director Nick Nicholas Katz stated that to our face that we had a Beastie Boy complex, and our chapter only worried about parties. We didn't have any meaningful events on campus and things of that sort. Um, which is clearly a lie, like I tried to post many events for as far as sex education, women empowerment, uh, My Brother's Keeper, just many events on campus. You can definitely see a difference between black fraternity and sororities and the Panhellenic fraternity and sororities and white fraternity and sororities. Um, for one, we are not funded the same. There is no D9 house on campus um, but you see all types of houses for the Panhellenic community. Uh, people ask me all the time, why is that? I don't know. My senior year is the year that really just kind of changed everything for me. I went to speak at the Board of Trustees meeting and I was yelled at. I was talked to very by little by Polly Radash. She was a board member um, 
And she began to yell at me and my peers about how she has done so much work and that for the past 30 years that they have done so many things and that this campus is very inclusive, yet she can't tell me where the fruit of that labor is. She can't explain to me what resources we have. She can't show me any of the black faculty that she's claimed that she has hired. She can't show any of that to me, but she would love to discourage me and yell at me and try to discredit me in front of everybody and no one did anything no faculty stood up because they are scared no one no board member stood up because they are scared and it's just crazy the privilege that our allies have that they don't utilize to help us also just being a black student in macomb it's terrible like when you step off like when you step off this campus and you go to Wal walmart or if you go to walgreens or dollar general or any one of those stores like you can like it's like a hundred percent guarantee that you will be followed like even like if you don't notice it at first like you will look behind you and someone's gonna be following you and thinking that you're trying to steal they're on their walkie oh these people are in the back all this blah that and they follow you throughout the store and it's just like why why are you out here doing this for like just because we're out here shopping we're giving you our money and you think i'm stealing um yeah, I just feel like Westerman has a lot of work to do and for it to hold so many black students as they do have, there should be way more black professors, there should be way more black programming, there should be way more black funding, you know, from black alumni, even just attending like the homecoming and just seeing the the ostracizing, like the separating, you know, from the black alumni council to like, you know, the white people who are like taking all over the parking lot and the BAC was just like somewhere, you know, at Gwendolyn Park, which is what they wanted, but it's just, there just seems to be like a big distance um, between I feel like white students and black students here. And just knowing the history, you know, from the fact that Weston pushed out their only black president into a lot of black faculty and staff like leaving, I can just see like why, you know, one, black students here don't feel welcome and they don't feel encouraged, but why nobody really likes this institution. Um, the main reason why I did come here, you know, was like for the graduate program and I really do love the students here in the community but we are really all that we have here um and if the black students specifically like were not here I 100% like would not have attended like if I didn't work in the MCC I wouldn't be here. Western is very segregated all the way down from the organizations to homecoming for example. Homecoming is one of the biggest segregations, in my opinion, at Western. Because there is a Western homecoming, and then there is a Black homecoming. And the fact that Blacks have to make their own homecoming to feel, you know, welcomed or to feel like we belong, that doesn't sit well with me. And I noticed that my freshman year. As far as my, my major, as an English education major in the program in that department is not a lot of black students for me to even you know try to connect with we can try to get through this together you know I have you know slumped to none or I've met at least three other black students in the education program I've been in classes where I've been the only black student I've been the only black woman I've had conversations with with classmates and with professors about the place that I'm from because of their own stereotypes, you know? I've had to come in on day one and my icebreaker be, so why do they call Chicago Chirac? I don't know. My mom went to Western in the 80s and she warned me that I shouldn't go. I should look at other options and, you know, but I'm like, I wanna go here. Cause, <laughs> yeah, I regret it. I promise you I do. If I had the option to do it all over again, I, I would not pick Western. I wouldn't. I don't like being, you know, categorized and I don't like being attacked in some place that I'm supposed to be comfortable with. I'm learning and I'm learning constantly being on this campus dealing with people of my race and people of the opposite race. But the one thing that I learned here within the five years that I've been on this campus is that my voice does not matter and that my opinion doesn't matter and that whatever concerns me or belittles me or attacks my character does not matter on this campus. And as long as 
we sit and wait i don't know how long they expect us to sit and wait but it's like if we can't sit down and come up with a plan with you guys i don't get the purpose and being black on this campus makes me feel little and i don't want to feel little if i'm supposed to be here to grow and then personally the last thing i have to say about all of this is just that I feel as though our voices are constantly, constantly being thrown out. And if this campus really cared about black students on this campus, they would do more. And as more, I mean physically action, not just sending out an email. I am so, so tired of getting an email. I mean, how many emails can you send? And then it's like the voice behind the email is nowhere to be seen ever. So I really don't know. Am I important on this campus? You tell me.